Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to a tutorial on how to create focus lines for your animations in Flash. Let's take a look at what focus lines look like. There we go. So focus lines are something that are used in comics and have kind of transferred into animation. They're a way of making the audience focus on one particular element of a drawing or part of a scene in an animation. You can see that I've written the word stuff there. That's what we're focusing on. So let's take a look at a couple of different ways to create them. Let's jump into Illustrator and you can see that what I've done here is I've created a number of lines using the line tool, which you can find here. And on each of these lines, I've used a variable width stroke. I've used this width profile one. And I've got a couple of guides here that you can create by dragging them out from your rulers. So I've drawn a couple of guides just to show where my center point is and I've drawn my focus lines emanating from this central point. So I'll just do a couple more as an example. So there's one. Might draw a kind of smaller one that's not quite hitting the center. Might draw one that's coming out but not quite getting to the center. And I'll draw one here. Maybe one that's almost horizontal there and so on. So I'm just going to grab those, bump up the stroke thickness a little bit and then apply this width profile and you can see that I've got these really cool lines going into the center. Down here I've decided that I want my focus lines to just come from the corners of my image or the edges and I've used a different width profile. I've used this triangular one here you can see normally it faces the other way. You stroke options over here, where it says profile, you can flip it along. That changes the direction that it displays. And you can see these will be cropped off at the edge of the image and they just encroach really nicely and kind of focus attention towards the center. So what's cool about doing these in Illustrator is that you could just copy them and jump into Flash I create a new document. So here I've just got a 1080p document. Just paste those in. Make sure you don't paste them as a bitmap so they continue to be vectors. Click OK. And you can just align those in the corners of your image. Like so. So you get something that looks like that. You can even rotate them so they point a bit more towards your actual center, like so. Now that's one way of doing it. If you've got Illustrator, it's a really good way of creating these kind of effects. Now that I've tilted them, I could copy and paste them and rotate them around and insert them into the other corners, like so. But one thing that I find a little bit difficult is getting a nice kind of randomization of these lines that you can see somebody with a keen eye will be able to tell that these strokes up here are the same as these ones down here. So it's completely legitimate to do them in Illustrator, but I make my focus lines in a piece of software called Manga Studio. I'm gonna be using Manga Studio 4 because they've removed the focus lines filter from Manga Studio 5. So this is an optional different way of doing it that's a little bit more sophisticated. Obviously not all of you will be able to get your hands on Manga Studio 4. So in Manga Studio, we're going to go to File, New, Page. We want to make it 1920 by 1080. We click OK. That makes it the same size as our Flash stage. Just before we get started, we need to make a center point for our focus lines. So. Luckily, I've got these rulers here on the top and the side. If you don't have rulers, go to View, Show Page Ruler. And what I can do is you can see there's this little line showing me where my cursor is. 
I'm going to get the line tool here and I'm going to start off from zero. So I'm just going to line myself up, hold down shift, and draw a line across like that. And I'm going to do the same at the top, hold down shift, draw a line down. And you can see that that's now intersecting at our center. These won't actually show up unless we grab the pencil tool and draw along them like that. So the pencil tool will automatically snap to these lines that we've drawn, like so. So we can call this layer center point, like so. And we can create a new layer and call it focus one. So that's our first set of focus lines. So it's really simple. We just go to filter and choose focus lines. And when we do that, we get our focus line options. The first thing we want to do is make sure that this cross is bang in the center, like so. And then we can have a mess about with our settings. The length controls, unsurprisingly, how long your lines are. So if we mess about with that, we could pull the length of the lines down quite considerably. You can see that because the lines are shorter, the thickness is not distributed over as much of an area. So I'm going to whack that back up, I think. Something like that. So similarly, the width, if we pull it down, our lines will become a lot thinner. If we push back up, they become thicker. I've got this little random box ticked here, which randomizes the thickness of the lines, so they're not all uniform and exactly the same. Just makes our image look a bit more interesting. If you want to get some interesting results, it's worth playing around with the interval options. You can either measure it in degrees or millimeters. If I jump down to the millimeter option here, you can see you get this really interesting kind of starburst image. It's on 10 millimeters at the moment. If I shove it up a little higher, you can see that the lines are much more randomly spaced apart and they kind of circle around the center until they start bunching together a lot more. And if we click on degrees, we can change the options in much the same way, but using degrees instead of millimeters. So the lower the value, the more packed together they will be, and the more of an image like this you'll get. Let's push that up a little bit, something like that. And I've also randomized the interval value. If I untick that, you can see that we get a bit more of a uniform image. The curvature is fairly self-explanatory. The higher that I push it up, the more curved the lines are in a positive value. So at the moment they're 30, 31, this is 65. So they're kind of curving towards the center. If you push them down to a negative value, they'll curve in the opposite direction. I'm going to leave that on zero. Let's look at our displacement options for a minute. I've got it set to 10 at the moment, and I've got this random box ticked. If I untick it, we get this very sort of perfect circle. It's very obvious that all the lines begin at the same point. I like to turn my randomness on just to kind of break that image up and make it look a bit more shattered and kind of like organic and interesting. And the higher you push up your displacement, the more displaced the lines will be, the more kind of distance in between them they'll be and the more kind of randomized that is. Down here we've got the distance. The distance measures how far away from the center the lines are. So at the moment they're 40 millimeters, I think. But as we push it up, they'll get further out to the edges. And if we push it, really far down, they come really nice and close into the center. So I'm going to leave mine on 40, I think, like so. And you can alter whether the strokes are tapered on the inside and outside. If I turn that off, it looks like we've drawn a load of really fat strokes in Illustrator. So I'm going to leave those on so that it makes our lines look tapered and interesting. And there we go, we're ready to go. I'm quite happy with these focus lines, so I'm going to click OK. 
And because we're making these for animation, we're going to make three different versions of them so that we can have three different keyframes. So next up, I'm going to click on new layer again. I'm going to call it focus 02. I want it to be a raster layer. That's all fine. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to turn off this focus 01. Go to focus lines. Just make sure that that X is right. Whack in the center there, like so. So these guys that we drew are really useful. I'm going to hit regenerate, and then click OK. So we've got a different image now. You can see this is number one, and that's number two. So looking slightly different, but not so different that the eye won't be able to register them. And I'm going to create one more layer and call it Focus 03. Click OK. And I'm going to create another set of focus lines. Just make sure it's bang on in the center. Like so. And click Regenerate. And then click OK. So what we've got now is three different layers with focus lines on. We've got a center point guide there. You can turn that off, I think. And now we're ready to export this. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Image in Pixels. I want to output it at the actual size. I want the entire page in grayscale. I only want the finished image. And I'm going to call it Focus Lines Example and I'm going to save it in my focus lines created in lesson folder. You can save it wherever you like, of course. And then I'm going to click OK. So it's just going to render that out into a multi-layered Photoshop document. And click OK. Find that on my hard drive. Here we go. Open that up in Photoshop. And you can see we've got our three layers here. They're transparent, which is really useful. I'm going to delete this blank layer here, and this base layer as well. There we go. So we've got all our lines in there. I'm going to save it. And next up, we're going to open it up in Illustrator, as if we hadn't used enough programs already. But the purpose of doing that is to vectorize it so that we can edit it and change its color in Flash if we so wish. And it'll also make it look a bit crisper and cleaner. So I'm going to right click, go to Illustrator, and I want to convert layers to objects and not flatten them. So we want to bring those layers in. Click OK. And here we go. We've got our three layers down here in our layers palette. And I'm going to go through one of them at a time and trace them. You can, of course, trace things in Flash, but the tracing facilities in Flash aren't as sophisticated as those in Illustrator. So you get better results by using Illustrator. I'm going to click on my image, go to the image trace options here, click on that. And then we'll use the default settings. And there we go, we've got a really nice vector trace of our focus lines. I'm going to click expand. And then we're going to move on to our next one. So it's number two. Okay, this is our second image. I'm going to go up to Image Trace. It'll have a think. I'm going to go to Expand. And then we've just got the third one to do. I'm going to click on that one. Image Trace. Expand. There we go. So we've now got a three layered image. And we're just going to save that as an Illustrator file. Because as I'm sure you know, we can import Illustrator files into Flash. I'm going to delete that PSD bit. Just call it Focus Lines Example Illustrator. Click OK. So let's jump into Flash. And I've got a blank document here at 1920 by 1080. I can go to File, Import, Import to Stage. I'm going to choose that Illustrator file, click Open. When I do that, I'll get these options here. We've only got one artboard, which makes life simpler. 
We want to maintain editable paths and effects. We don't want to flatten it into a bitmap. We've not got any text, so this isn't relevant. And we want to convert our layers, not to flash layers, but to keyframes. So for each of our layers, it will create a keyframe in Flash, which is really useful. So I'm going to click OK. And now, although it's very small, we've got a little animation. We've got our focus lines. Looking really cool. So next up, we need to go to our Edit Multiple Frames button down here. And if we select All, we'll be able to resize all three of these frames together. So I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt, which constrains the proportions and resizes from our corner point here. And there we go. I've sized them up so they're the same size as the stage. I can turn Edit Multiple Frames off. We can play it through. You can see we've got our animation there. It's going a little bit fast. So on each of these keyframes, I'm going to press F5 just to make them last for one extra frame. If we hit our loop button now, you can see there is our very cool focus lines animation. We've got some really nice randomization there and it adds some dynamism to our image and focuses our eyes in on the center of our frame. So there you go. That's focus lines. Have a go yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.